so good morning. Uh, okay, last weekend we have a problem with our uh, e-learning. I know that all of you cannot open it. Okay, so basically uh, I'm extending the due date for the assignment to Thursday. Okay, before our class, 12 p.m. Okay, so I think now you can open the the assignment. Okay, I have only three questions. Okay, I hope all of you can try this. Okay, and please, everyone should upload before Thursday. So that on Thursday we can so that on Thursday we can and do the tutorials. Okay. Anyone uh, uh, submitted after the tutorial, basically I won't accept the uh, your answer. Okay. Uh, Today, we will move to chapter 5, okay? I hope uh, you can check the outcome for chapter 4 last time, okay? So basically, you should be able to analyze the characteristic of the feedback control system, okay? So that is the outcome for the last chapter four. Okay. So basically, uh, you should be realize the four main advantage of the feedback control system. Okay. And how to analyze all that those advantage. Okay. Of course, it got the disadvantage as well. Okay, especially in terms of stability. Okay. So that's basically what you need to do. I understand if you open the books, basically there are a lot more things that I, I can discuss, but because of our limitation of time, okay, I hope you read the book yourself. Okay? There are many uh, examples there. Okay? Try th those examples in the books. Okay, today we will go in, into the chapter 5, okay, chapter 5 basically the uh, outcome is the outcome number 4, which will be, you should be able to measure the performance and determine, uh, able to measure the performance, okay, of feedback control system. Stability basically on chapter 6, okay. So this is chapter 5. Okay, so there are a few sections there, okay, so we will cover most of the section there, okay. Here also, we have a section about design example and so on. Normally, I won't cover, okay, you need to read yourself, okay. I just uh, cover the main theory of the uh, chapter, <laughs> okay. This chapter 5 is basically talking also about the analysis, uh, further analysis that we can do, okay? Basically, to evaluate the performance of feedback control system, okay? So that by having this knowledge, you can judge whether a system is bad or a system is good, okay? So I will explain the performance of feedback control system which is uh, basically covered in section 5.1, performance of feedback control system. And then section 5.2, talking about test input signal. And then maybe a little bit of the section 5.3. 5.3 is basically long. Okay, tomorrow also I will it'll, it'll continue with section 5.3 performance of second order system okay 
So the knowledge on control system, mathematical model, uh, mathematical models, and feedback control system characteristics that you have learned in chapter one, chapter two, and also chapter four. Okay, will help you understanding this. Okay. Uh, for performance of feedback control system, okay. In chapter so uh, four, we have uh, learned also that there is uh, the ability to adjust the transients and steady state response of feedback control system is a beneficial outcome of the control system design. Okay. Because later on, okay, when we need to design the control system, okay, basically we should be able to adjust the transient response and also the steady state response. Okay, so that both of this type of response will perform better. Okay, and in order to do that, first we need to do the analysis before we can do the design. Okay. Normally, system performance, like percentage of overshoot. Okay. Last time we have seen that during the transient response, sometimes there will be overshoot. Okay. So this overshoot also we can measure. Uh, okay, in the in the form of the percentage. Okay, settling time. Okay, settling time is the time where the system will become steady state. Okay, where the transient response will, will fade away, will, will, will be gone. Okay. The peak time. Okay. The peak time is the time where the time taken for the system to get the the highest point, which is the the peak of the overshoot. Okay. So how long the time will be taken so that the uh, output will be maxi uh, maximum? Okay. And then the race time. The race time basically is the time where, uh, for the first time, the output will be equal to the final value. Okay. And then the last one is steady state error. I think in chapter four we already talked about steady state error, so you know about that. And normally, this performance measure will be given as design specification. Okay. Later on, I will explain further what is the percent of overshoot, what is the settling time, what is the peak time, what is the race time. Okay. But basically, the, all this performance measure normally will be given as design specification. You mean that if you are given a job to design a control system, okay, so normally you will be given a specification, okay, and the specification normally will be written in the form of any one of this, any one or or any of this uh, performance measure, okay? Either percentage of overshoot, shuttling time, peak time, race time, and also steady state error, okay? And based on that specification, you need to make your system so that later on it will works, which producing this performance measure. Okay. So in design, actually, uh, the work will be reversed. Okay, 
when we do analysis, basically, we have the response, okay, and then we do the measurement of the response, and we, we get all this performance measure, okay. But in design, okay, you will be given the a performance measure, and you you need to make your system to works with this performance, okay. Reverse in design, okay. So the the control system design must fulfill the specification, okay. I think later on in chapter seven and chapter ten we will discuss about the design, how we can uh, make the system to fulfill the specification that is required in the design. The only thing when we're talking about the system performance, okay, system performance are always contradicting okay, to each other and the design need trade off, okay. I think last time in chapter one, and also maybe in other chapter we have seen that some uh, parameter when we increase, the other parameter will be affected as well, okay. And that's always happen, okay. So same also when we do the measurement. Okay, let's say we have a, a certain parameter that we vary. Okay, if we measure the performance measure one, for example, we will it'll end up with a, a graph like this. Okay, where it may be decreasing with the increase of the parameter p. Okay. But on the other hand, maybe we have another performance measure that we can measure. Okay? But when we vary the parameter P, we will see that the graph is increasing. Okay? So, normally when we design a system, we wanted all the performance measure will be high as possible. Okay? Okay? But if you have a contradicting situation like this, okay? Because if you make the P minimum, so that you can have uh, the value uh, the performance measure one higher, what will happen? The performance measure two will become lower. Okay. On the other hand, if you put the if you select the p uh, maximum, okay, higher, okay, you will get the performance measure 1 is low and the performance measure 2 is high. Okay? So that's why when there is a contradiction like this, normally we need to trade off. Okay? When trade off, normally we need to find the optimum uh, point of the P. Okay? And normally the intersection of this graph normally taken as the optimum point, okay? Where, in this case, although we find that the performance measure one is not so high, okay, but the performance measure two also will become not very low, okay? So we can accept this point as uh, the value of the p as the uh, trade off value. Okay. Okay, next, before 
we proceed with uh, talking about the performance measure. Okay. Uh, we need to talk about the test input signal. Uh, standard test input signal. There are few standard input test signal that we should test our system with this input. Okay. To see the performance. Okay. One type of the input signal. Okay. This test uh, Test input signal is basically the the input RS, okay, or in the time domain it is RT, okay. One type of the test input signal is called a step function, okay. A step function is a function where before the time t equal to zero, okay. The value of the R is basically equal to zero. The only thing after the R is equal to uh, the T is equal to zero, it will be equivalent to A, a constant A. Okay, so that's why we call it as a step because before this is zero, and then it is step up to A. Okay. And in the time domain, step input is written as RT is equal to A multiplied by UT. Okay? UT is known as a unit step function. Uh, when we talk about a unit step function, basically, the A is equal to 1. Okay? A unit step function. So that means if you have a unit step function before the time um, equal to zero, okay, basically the ut is equal to zero, and then after t is uh, equal to zero and greater, it will become equal to one. Okay. The only thing, if we multiply with this constant A, it will become a step function. Okay? And in the, if we transform this function into S domain, okay, using the Laplace transform, basically we will get a function of A over S. Okay, so that is a step function. Okay, this function normally we use if we want to set the input command, okay, to certain level, to certain value. Okay, for example, like the temperature in this room, okay, if we setting for example, to certain uh, uh, temperature, for example, let's say maybe we want 24 degrees Celsius. Okay. So once we slide the, maybe the potentiometer or whatever, uh, the slider th that we got in the control panel there. Okay. When we set from the previous value to a certain level of value, Basically, that is a step input, okay? Because we're stepping up the value, the level, from one level to another level, okay? And then another type of input is called as a RAM function, okay? RAM function is basically, uh, if we want the input to change at a certain rate, Okay, a constant rate. Okay, so it is dependent on time. Okay, that's why the equation is equal to A multiplied by T. Okay, so it will increase with the time. As the time increases, it is increased. Okay, 
And this one, uh, if we transform into S domain, basically it will become A divided by S square. Okay. So RAM function normally we use, for example, uh, if we want to control the speed, for example, with a certain rate of increase for the speed, for example. Okay. For example, if we wanted a constant acceleration, for example, okay, of course, uh, we need to control the uh, speed so that it is increased gradually, okay, with a constant slope, okay. So this is a RAM function, okay. Okay, another function, okay, is called as parabolic function. Okay, parabolic function is basically uh, we have the equation RT is equal to A multiplied by T square. Okay, so if we have this equation, basically we have a parabolic curve here. Okay, where it is depending on time, but the increase is not constant. Okay, basically, if you increase the time, it is increase is higher. Okay, that's why it become a parabolic curve like that. Okay, so if you transform this into S domain, okay, this basically will equal to 2 multiplied by A divided by S to the power of 3. Okay, the transformation here you can refer to the tables 2.3 that we learned in chapter 2. Okay. So the okay for some cases maybe we have, have uh, we need to simulate where the input is changing parabolically like this okay and then the the last one the last one is called the impal function okay impal function is generally is similar to step function. Okay. The only thing, the step function, if you look here, okay, it will maintain that value until time equal to infinity. Okay. But for the impulse function, it only it only maintain that value okay for only a short time. Okay, and then it will go back to zero again. Okay, so basically, we can say the RT is equal to A multiplied by what what we call the symbols? I forgot. What is that? Epsilon. Is it right? It's not delta. I think delta is some yang tiga segi tu. Okay, never mind. I think uh, these symbols. Okay, so this symbol is basically is a unit step in uh, unit impulse function. Okay, which is equivalent to this, where when the time is in between zero to delta t. Basically, it is equal to 1, and then otherwise it will become 0. Okay? And this time is actually is a very short time, short period of time. Okay? And we need to multiply with the A here. Okay? So A is a constant, it becomes an impulse function. So the transformation uh, basically is equal to RS is equal to A. Okay, so this is impulse. And impulse normally, 
Uh, I think quite a number being used for disturbance. Okay? Because if we want to simulate the uh, the disturbance as an input, okay, to the TD, okay, sometimes it is come in the po in form of the impulse where the disturbance come for a few minutes and then it gone again, okay. So that is impulse, and. Although if you see that all this input is vary, but we can generalize them, okay? Basically, all of them is based on this function. Okay, RT is equal to A multiplied by T to the power of N. Okay? Okay, the, the only thing the T can be depending at uh, the N value can be in the step function here. Okay, the T is basically zero, uh, the N is equal to zero. Okay, here the N is equal to one. Here the N is equal to two. Okay, and uh, this one, I think if you refer to the Table 2.3, okay, when you transform it into S domain, basically it's following this equation, okay? A factorial of N divided by S to the power N plus 1. So if you do for this one, for this one, I think you get the same answer, okay? So any question on the test input signal? Now the response later on will depend on the on the transfer function that you have. Because you will multiply in order to get the output of the response you need to multiply the input with the transfer function, right? Okay, so it will be, it will be depending on the uh, transfer function as well. Pardon? Why? No, actually this delta t is very, very short. Okay, the time is very, very short. I think uh, normally less than second, uh, actually. Okay, it is very, very short. Okay, so the only thing we can imagine that uh, the signal come and go. Okay, a very short time. Okay. Later on, I think in the, in the, we show the response, the difference if we apply the step function and if we apply the impulse function, okay? Where there is the difference. I think in chapter two also, I think we did that, if you remember, okay? Where between implementing the impulse and also the step function. But I think later on, we will cover that as well. Okay, next, uh, we go to the next section, which is the performance of second order system. Okay, in chapter two, we have looked at the second order system. We also look the, the response of the first order system. The only thing if you so review back the response of the first order system how it look like can you recall 
If you have a first order system, how is the response looks like? When we have a system with the first order system, basically the pole is complex or real number. The pole is real. Okay? When the pole is real, what do you see? Okay? When the pulse is only reals, you will see that the system is over them, right? There is no fluctuation. Okay? That's why actually for the, for the first order, the response is quite simple because no fluctuation. Okay? But if you have a second order system, okay? It is depending on the characteristic equation, right? Okay, the poles can be both of them reals, or the pole also can be both of them a complex number. Okay? And if the uh, if the response if the poles are complex number Okay, basically, you have an over, uh, under dam system where there is fluctuation okay, in the response during the transient uh, period. Okay, so that's why we need to uh, uh, analyze more on the second order system. Okay because it is more complex than the first order system. Okay, let's look if we have a second order system. Okay, we have a, an equation like this. Okay, let's write the transfer function for the process GS as in the form of the frequency as omega n, the power of 2, divided by S multiply by s plus 2 zeta omega n okay so if you have this uh, this block diagram okay you need to find your response okay your response basically is the transfer function of this block diagram multiply by the rs okay the input okay of course, this one we can simplify into this loop. We can simplify into a block where it will be equal to G as a function of S divided by 1 because this is minus. So plus G as a function of S multiply H as the function of S. Okay? So in this block diagram, what is the value of the H? Okay, the HS is basically is equal to 1. That's why we replace that 1. Okay, and then the GS is equal to this function. So we just replace that for GS. Okay, and if we simplify this equation, basically we will get omega n square divided by S square plus 2 multiply by zeta multiply by omega n multiply by s plus omega n square multiply by rs okay so this one is basically is equivalent to the ts the transfer function okay and this one is the input okay let's say if we apply the test input Rs equal to a step function, 1 over S. Okay? In fact, this is not a step function. This is a, unity, a unit step function because A is equal to 1. Okay? So we just replace the Rs here. 
uh, with this one, one OS. So basically, we have the uh, response equal to this equation, omega n square, omega n square, multi uh, divided by s multiplied by s square plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n square. Okay. And if you want to use the partial fraction fra uh, expansion to proceed to get the inverse Laplace transform, also you can do. Otherwise, you can refer to page 81, table 2.3, the Laplace uh, transform tables. You will find in the row 14, that if we have the equation like this, okay, if we have the equation like this, it, it will be transformed into T domain to become like this. Okay, this is from the table. Okay, so basically, if we have Ys is equal to this one, so if we follow this table, basically the transformation will become like this in the time domain. Yt is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by square root of minus 1, uh, uh, 1 minus zeta square. Okay. And then we multiply with the exponential of minus zeta omega n t multiply by sine omega n times square root of 1 minus zeta square multiply by t plus uh, cos r cos zeta. Okay? Or this one is basically is equal to theta. Okay? So this is the response equation for second order system. Okay? And if you analyze this equation, okay, there are few terms here. This is a constant term. Okay. And then this is a constant as well. Because one divided by square root of this one is basically is a constant. And then this is the exponential term. Okay, and then this is the third, uh, this one is the, this one is the sine term. Okay. And again, if you look at this equation, basically you will notice that this part of the equation is the transient response. Okay. And this part of the equation is which type of response? This is the steady state response. Right? Because at the end, the final value of the yt, when t is approaching infinity, will become 1. Okay? And Also, in this equation, if you look at the, the equation that will produce the transient response, okay, it will depend on the zeta, which is the damping ratio. You have the zeta here, zeta here, zeta here, zeta here. Okay? And it will be depending on the natural frequency as well. You have two place here, natural frequency and natural frequency. And it also depending on the time. Okay, there are three parameters there. Okay. So these are the, uh, this is the equation.
So if you visualize this equation, basically from this mathematical equation, basically this one show that you have a value of a constant y, uh, constant y t equal to one. Okay. But as the time goes, you need to multiply with this because uh, this one is basically it's a combination of the sine wave and then a, the exponential term and then a constant here. Okay? Three terms. So, here, if you plot this equation, okay, Let's say here the omega n and also the t, we combine them, become one parameter. Omega n multiplied by t. Here also omega n multiplied by t. We just replace to become one equation. And then we vary them. Okay. We vary the omega n multiplied by t. Okay. So, basically the other variables that we need to take into account is the zeta. Okay? Let's set the zeta equal to a constant. Let's say we set the zeta equal to 0 0.1. Okay? So when we vary the omega n multiplied by t, basically we'll get the value of the yt when we change the time. Okay? Uh, we change the omega n multiplied by t. Okay? And then the value we get, we can plot them. Okay? Like that. Okay? We just plot yt against omega n multiplied by t. Right? Okay? Similarly, you can change the value of zeta to 0 0.2 and then vary the omega n multiplied by t again. And you will get this plot. Okay? And then you change the zeta equal to 0 0.4, and then you can plot again. Okay? From this plot, what you will notice that the fluctuation of the response is depend on the value of the zeta. Right. So, if the value of the zeta is increased, uh, is low, okay, you can see that the fluctuation is very uh, uh, there, is, there are more fluctuation. Okay? It becomes under them. Okay? But when the zeta is greater than 1, you will notice that the system will become over them. That's why there is no uh, fluctuation. Okay? And if it is equal to 1, okay, it is called the system will face the condition of critically damped. Okay? So critically damped is just almost to have the... It doesn't have overshoot actually. But if we increase a little bit, uh, we decrease a little bit the value, Basically, it will start overshooting. Like when we have a 0 0.7 here, it become uh, start fluctuating. Okay? So that is the res response of the second order system. Or maybe this graph also we can plot in 3D. This is when we vary the damping ratio. You can see here, with the higher damping ratio, the system will become over damped. Okay, there is no fluctuation. 
with a low damping ratio, basically the fluctuation will be higher. Okay, it is under damp. Okay. Okay, so that is from uh, the plots that we can get from the response. Okay, that's why sometimes it is useful for us to use the octave, uh, to use the side lab. Okay, so that we can visualize the response of the uh, from this equation. Okay, from the mathematical equation. Any question up to now? Okay. That is the response due to step input, a unit step input. Okay. Let's look on the response of the second order system if we test with the impulse input. Okay, we have the same system. Okay, the process is the same. Of course, the transfer function is the same that we will get. Okay. And then from there, the only thing, since we're applying the impulse, okay, the input RS is equal to 1, unit impulse. Okay, if we replace this one with one and then we have this equation okay okay compare to the one before okay the one before we have a s multiplied by this equation but now we have only this equation only okay so if we look at the table of Laplace transform, okay, if we do the inverse Laplace transform, this one will become um, Ft is equal to omega n divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square multiplied by exponential of minus zeta omega n t multiplied by sines of omega n and square root of 1 minus zeta square t. Okay? So if we implement this to this in, uh, inverse Laplace transform, basically we got the yt equal to this equation. Okay? Okay, if you look at this equation, Okay, you got the three term here. One is, this one is a constant. And then you have this one, exponential term. And then you have a sine term here. Okay. The only thing, if you compare this equation with the previous equation of when you, when you, applying the, uh, the step function, what are the difference? Okay, if you compare with this equation, okay, with that equation, what are the difference? Okay, one of the thing here, basically there is no plus r cos zeta, right? That is missing. Another one, what is that? Okay, in the previous equation, we have one minus this one, okay? So that's basically the difference. Okay?
okay uh, okay why we have one minus because when we input a step function a unit step function okay basically we know that the steady state value will become one at the end okay to follow our input because the step function we want it to be set to one okay but when we applying the impulse okay what will be the steady state value if we are applying impulse the steady state value will be zero okay that's why here the one is gone okay because it's basically zero the the steady state value is zero and this only become the the transient response only okay and if you look here minus a uh, plus r cos of zeta in the previous equation that one is basically equivalent to the angle of theta okay so the that angle of theta is basically a phase angle okay so if we remove this one that phase angle from here basically it just shifted in term of the angle so if you plot the this equation you will see like this okay the response will be fluctuation uh, fluctuating and then later on it will become steady state at the value of equal to zero okay so if you compare this one with the previous uh, response what are the different previously it will become steady state at one right but here the steady state at located at zero okay and here the same thing will happen when you change the value of zeta okay if you have low value of zeta okay the fluctuation will be more okay it become under them okay and if you increase the value of the zeta okay if one bas uh, zeta equal to one basically will become critical damping okay and then if above one basically it will become over them okay so that's basically the response okay when we implement the uh, test input different test input okay so this is the impulse and before this was the uh, step input okay and the system will depend on the uh, damping ratio the damping ratio will uh, is very very important okay okay if you look back at this uh, the response of the second order system due to the step input actually when we have the damping ratio is less than one what will happen actually to your equation okay actually if you look at the s okay if you look at your response in the s domain okay this is your response in the s domain you have a pole located at s equal to zero and then two poles which depend on the value of zeta and also omega n 
right? Okay. So actually, if you have the zeta less than one, okay, the pole will become a complex pole. Okay, but if you have the value of the zeta greater than one, okay, the poles will become a real poles. Okay, that's why the response will become over them. Okay. And for the for this one also the same. Okay. Of course, the difference here there is no pole located at origin at zero. Okay. The only thing you have only poles which depend on this characteristic equation. Okay, depending on the value of zeta and omega n. Okay, so similarly also, if you have the zeta less than 1, okay, the pole will become a complex pole. Okay, that's why you have a fluctuation. But if zeta is greater than 1, the poles will become um, real poles. Okay which you will have no fluctuation. Okay? So this is the response, okay, that you will see when you imp applying the impulse and also the uh, step input. Okay? Tomorrow we will continue again the sec uh, that section. Okay? Basically, the control system are Designed by adjusting the transient and steady state response of feedback control system. The control system performance are percent of overshoot, settling time, peak time, race time, steady state error. Okay. Tomorrow I will discuss more about this performance measure. Okay. The control system design must fulfill the specification based on the performance which may need trade off okay there are standard test input signal that are used to test the performance of control system okay basically the step inputs the impulse input or the ram input or the uh, parabolics input a plot of system response can be drawn by obtaining the equation of the output of a system as a function of time. Okay. So the plot of system response shows the system performance. Okay. When a step or impulse input signal is applied, the response of a second order system will initially fluctuate for some time. Okay transient and then remain constant steady state okay jadi i think we stop here okay we continue the next lecture tomorrow